Welcome, Maths lovers. Thank you for joining me on Mathlete Minds. Today, we continue our journey of polynomials. Now, in this particular video, we'll be talking about graphical representation of zeros of a polynomial. Now, what exactly do we understand by the graphical representation of the zeros of the polynomial? We'll do the take the illustrations one at a time. To initiate, we begin with linear polynomials. Now, in the case of a linear polynomial, which has a standard form of fx is equal to ax plus b, the graph line will always be a straight line. Whether it, uh, whatever value of uh, uh, coefficient of x is there and whatever be the value of uh, this constant, the graph line will always be a straight line. It's a linear polynomial, degree one polynomial. So in the case of a degree one polynomial, the graph line is always a straight line. And also, it will intersect the x-axis exactly and exactly one point. So here, supposing in this particular polynomial, y is equal to ax plus b. Now, where it intersects the x-axis, the y-coordinate is 0. So if we put 0 over here, we get ax plus b. So x is equal to minus b upon a. So this is the 0 of the linear polynomial in terms of the coefficient, that is coefficient of x, and this is the constant, negative of the constant. And here, supposing we take this example, we get here y, we have given here y is equal to 2x minus 5. So if y is 0, that means if the uh, this line is intersecting the x-axis at the point of y is 0, then 0 is equal to 2x minus 5. So x is equal to 5 upon 2. So you can see over here that 5 upon 2 and 0 are the zeros of this particular line. So it will in, the thing that we must remember is in a linear polynomial, the graph line will intersect at one point only the x-axis and uh, it will always be a straight line. Supposing this uh, portion of this, uh, that is the constant of uh, the coefficient of x is 0, in that case y will become equal to b or the constant. So in that case, we will have a line parallel to the x-axis. If y is plus b, then the line will be parallel to the x-axis above the x-axis. And if y is equal to minus b, then the line will be parallel to the x-axis below the x-axis. Moving on, we take a quadratic polynomial. Now, in the case of a quadratic polynomial, you will find that the graph line is always of a particular shape. This shape is called the parabola. And the point over here, uh, the bottom over here, that is called the vertex of the parabola. In this case, this is the vertex of the parabola. You will also notice that the parabola is symmetrical about the axis over here. In both the cases, it is symmetrical about the y-axis, but it is not necessary that the vertex will always lie at the origin and it will always be symmetrical about the y-axis. It can be shifted in any quadrant and it, depending upon the particular quadrant, the so, uh, axis of symmetry will be defined. But here we have taken the simplest representation of the parabola y is equal to x squared. Now, why do we get this particular shape of the uh, this particular polynomial? Now, supposing I take the value of x as 1, then y becomes equal to 1. If I take the value of x as 2, y becomes equal to 4. x as 3, y becomes equal to 9. So, whatever be the value of x, the y value is the square of that. That means this graph line will increase exponentially along the positive direction. But what happens when we take negative values of x? When we take negative values of x, supposing I take x as minus 1, in this case also y becomes equal to plus 1. Square of a negative quantity is a positive quantity. If I take x as minus 2, y becomes equal to plus 4. So again you notice over here that this side also the values of y are all positive. Hence we get a graph line which is completely symmetrical about the y-axis. Now if we take y is equal to minus x squared. Now the moment the coefficient of x squared is negative, the graph, the curve of the graph, the parabola will open downwards. That also you need to remember. If here the coefficient of x squared was positive, so the graph was opening upwards. When it is opening downwards, that means the uh, coefficient of x squared is negative. Now here what happens is supposing I take the value of x as 1. In that case, y becomes equal to minus 1. If I take x as minus 2, y becomes 4, uh, four but there is a minus sign over here, so it becomes minus 4. So you'll find that whatever be the values of x you take, if you take plus 1, then also it is minus 1. If you take negative of 2, it becomes a negative of 4. If you take x as minus 3, 
if we take x as minus 3, y will become equal to minus 9. So the graph line will be symmetrical about the y-axis, negative y-axis. So this we need to understand in the case of a quadratic polynomial. Now, there are different cases arising in the case of a quadratic polynomial. The first case is when uh, this polynomial is factorizable into two distinct linear factors. That means we can uh, break up this uh, polynomial into two distinct linear factors and we can get two zeros. Now, zeros of a polynomial depend upon the degree. We have already discussed this. So, here it is a second degree polynomial. So, at most, maximum zeros that it can have will be two. It can have one and it can have no zeros also. So here in this particular polynomial, if we need to find the zero of this polynomial, that means if I say fx is equal to zero, that means x square minus 2x minus 8 is equal to zero. So if we factorize this, we get here x square minus 4x plus 2x minus 8 is equal to zero. So we get here x, x minus 4 plus 2 into x minus 4 is equal to zero. So if each of these poly, uh, linear factors x minus 4 and x plus 2 is equated to 0, we get x is equal to 4 and minus 2. And here in this particular graph, you will notice that x is, this is the point 4. It is from 0 to 10, the scale is 0 to 10. There are 5 divisions over here. So automatically this point over here represents 4, 0. And this point over here represents minus 2. And where, these, uh, where this graph line intersects the x-axis, those are the two zeros of this particular polynomial. In this case, the coefficient of x square is negative. So here the graph line is opening downwards. And these two points are the zeros of the graph line. So this is what we need to understand over here. When the parabola is opening downwards, the coefficient of x square will be negative. And if it is intersecting the straight uh, x-axis at two points, definitely this can be uh, we can obtain two linear polynomials and with the help of those two linear polynomials, we can get two zeros for this particular graph also. Moving on, when we have this polynomial, quadratic polynomial, uh, which can be factorizable into two equal factors. So here you see this is one polynomial x square minus 6x plus 9. Now if we have to factorize this, if we factorize this assuming fx to be 0, then x square minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. So this basically is a perfect square. We can write it as x minus 3 whole square is 0. So we get x is equal to 3 and 3. Both the values of the zeros are the same. That is 3 over here. So this, uh, when you have two equal factors, then the point at which the graph intersects the x-axis, that is only one single point over here. If the graph is opening upwards, the uh, point will be uh, on this x-axis over here. And if, the, uh, if it is preceded by a negative sign, that is the x square coefficient is negative, then it will open downwards. Here, if we buy, uh, divide, get the factors of this, we find over here that this particular point over here is half. That means 0 to half, this is right in the center over here. So this 0 over here is half and 0. So you can factorize and check out the linear factors that you will get will both be the same. And equating them to 0, you will get half over here as the x-coordinate and y-coordinate is 0. Now, if the graph ax square plus bx plus c cannot be factorized into two real and does not have real zeros, that means uh, we can factorize and we'll get complex numbers over here, but this cannot be factorized as real zero. So, in this case, the graph of the uh, quadratic will be not intersecting the x-axis at any point. If, it is, uh, if the coefficient of x square is positive, it will be opening upwards. And if the coefficient of x square is negative, it will be opening downwards. Now, moving on in the space of a quadratic polynomial, apart from deciding whether, uh, what happens when it opens, why it opens upwards, we also need to understand how do we decide the sign of the coefficient a, the coefficient b, and the coefficient c in the general representation ax square plus bx plus c of a quadratic polynomial. How do we check out what will be the sign of A, what will be the sign of B, what will be the sign of C? Now for A, it is very simple. You just have to see the shape of the parabola, where it is opening. If it is opening upwards, A will be positive. That means A will be greater than 0. Now for C, what, what do we have to do for C? fx is equal to ax square plus bx plus C. 
So this C uh, actually depicts a intercept on the y-axis. That means on the y-axis, we have the x coordinates, uh, the x points are zero. So if we take these values as zero over here, y will be equal to C. So here in this particular graph, the C value will be negative because it is intersecting the negative y. So C is less than zero. Now coming to B, which is the most crucial of them both. How do we decide about the uh, sign of B? In this case, what we have to do is we have to take into account or focus on the vertex of the parabola. Now the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola x1, y1 are represented by minus b upon 2a and minus d upon 4a. Now this representation is always there in whichever quadrant the parabola is, in whichever quadrant the vertex of the parabola is. So this uh, minus b by 2a and minus d by 4a is the uh, coordinates of the vertex of the parabola. Now this x coordinate will help us decide the value of b or the uh, sign of b for this particular polynomial. And the same rule can be applied for the vertex in any other quadrant also. Now if we look at this particular, you will find over here that the x coordinate that is minus b upon 2a is in the fourth quadrant. So of course the whole thing minus b by 2a is greater than 0. But because this parabola is opening upwards, a is already greater than 0. So if this condition has to be applied, that means minus b has to be greater than 0. Now to understand this in still uh, simpler terms, let us take for example a particular say a, a fraction like 2 upon 3. Now 2 upon 3 is greater than 0. So if I make this negative over here, if this, uh, if this has to be positive, both these numbers 2 and 3 has to be positive. If they are negative, both of them have to be negative. But we are already given that 3 is positive. So in order that this uh, is uh, justifying this particular condition, 2 must also be positive. So this is the rule that we apply away. Supposing 3 is negative, supposing the denominator A is negative. In that case, if it still has to be positive, it is still has to be greater than 0. In that case, then 2 also has to be negative to make this uh, statement justifiable. So we have to take this into account. Now here what happens, A is positive. So if this entire minus B upon 2A has to be greater than 0, then minus B has to be greater than 0. Or even for time, time being, if you remove say minus sign, B has to be greater than 0, minus B has to be greater than 0. So now here we get a linear inequality. Now solving this linear inequality, you must remember a specific rule. When we have a linear inequality with a negative sign on one side and or a negative side on both the sides, we take the help of negative 1 and multiply both the sides by negative 1. So this will become positive and this will remain 0. But what happens to the sign over here? The sign will get reversed. Now to understand this also, we can take an example. Supposing I write down minus 2 is less than minus 1. Now what happens over here? If I multiply both the sides by minus 1, this will become 2, this will become 1. But 2 is greater than 1. So the sign gets changed, it gets uh, uh, reversed and it becomes greater than sign. So here also the same thing happens, minus b has to be greater than 0, that means b has to be less than 0. The sign of b will be negative, so b is less than 0. So when we have the parabola in the fourth quadrant, a will be greater than 0, b will be less than 0, c will be less than 0, c will be negative, b will be negative, a because it's opening upward, it is positive. Now here there is another parabola which is opening downwards. So, but you see the vertex lies in the second quadrant. And uh, since it's opening downwards, so A is less than zero, you can immediately make that conclusion. What about C? C is the positive Y axis, so C is greater than zero. Now let us get back to B, uh, this value of for the sign of B. Now this vertex over here, the X coordinate is depicted by minus B by 2A. Now minus b by 2a is less than 0 because x over here in the second quadrant is uh, negative. So minus b by 2a is less than 0. But a is already less than 0. So if this has to be, if this condition has to be satisfied, minus b upon 2a has to be less than 0. Then in that case, if a is already negative, b must be positive to justify this. Then only uh, b upon a. 
will be less than zero. That means minus b upon two a must be if I take a as negative over here must be greater than zero or minus b must be greater than zero. Now, if we multiply both the sides by negative one over here, this becomes b is less than zero. So the conclusion is. In this case, b is negative uh, zero, less than zero. Here, a is less than zero, c is greater than zero, and b is less than zero. So that is how you decide the sign of a, b, and c in the different quadrants of uh, for the different parabolas. Now, they, these are graphs of cubic polynomials. Cubic polynomials have the highest degree as three, and so at most they will have three zeros. So if they have, they can have all the three zeros as different three zeros or they can have uh, all the zeros as the same zero way as in this particular graph line, or two of them may be equal, one may be unequal. So if they have all the same zeros in the uh, different zeros, the graph line will be intersecting the x-axis at three points. So you can see over here, the graph line is intersecting at this point at the origin at another point over here. In this case, the graph line is intersecting exactly at one point. The general representation of a cubic polynomial fx is defined as ax cube plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So the maximum zeros that it can have, the degree is three, maximum zeros it can have is three. And it can have uh, two same zeros, it can have one zero, uh, it can have all the three zeros as the same. And the best example of all the three zeros being the same is the example of x cube plus three x squared plus three x plus one. This is an expansion of x plus one, the whole cube. So we'll get all the three zeros as equal to minus one. So all the three zeros are minus one. So uh, basically this is what you need to understand in representation of uh, linear, sorry, representation of zeros in the case of polynomials. With that, we come to the end of this video. Hope you liked the explanation. Thank you for watching. Kindly like and subscribe to my channel.